Hey, it's Yuka. The era of Final Cut Pro 10 has ended and today marks the beginning of Final Cut Pro 11. There are some exciting updates, so let's go over the new features. First up is the Magic Mask. This feature allows you to cut out specific subjects like rotoscope. So let's say you want to work with this clip. I'm going to duplicate it first, go to this magic wand, or you could use this shortcut, Control Command M to do magic mask. And now you have this control. So you can literally just click on your subject. Or like the area of your subject and start kind of like selecting your mask. Now this kind of like added a little bit more than I wanted. So I can use this like little negative brush to make sure it's not like taking in parts that I don't need. Now I can click on analyze and this will just kind of go through the clip and create the rotoscope or the mask. So now the magic mask went through all of the frames in this video and cut out me and Pino. What you can do with this is just whatever you want creatively. You can kind of go through the clip and make sure you're happy with the mask. And if you are, you can click on done and now it's actually masked. Because there's a clip underneath, you can't really see it. So let me disable this. So now you have a transparent background. You can use this to create things like text in the background or add effects to a certain part of your video. So let's try that. Let me add a title beneath. So now I have text, like a title that's overlaid, not overlaid, is it called underlaid? I look like I'm on top of the text, which is really cool. And another thing you could do is add um, like some color effects to your background. Let's say I wanna make a black and white background just so you know the title pops and the subjects, which is me and Pino, kind of like pops out from the video. And this was so fast and so easy. Thinking about how we used to do this frame by frame just like a few years ago, it's amazing how far we've come. And I also wanna mention that this feature clearly showed the difference in performance between chips. So I tested on the same clip with an M1 Max and M4 MacBook Pro. It took 18 minutes and 49 seconds for the M4 to apply the magic mask for a 14 minute, 24 frames per second video. It was nearly real time, but had a few pauses and resulted in this time. The M1 Max took 26 minutes and 34 seconds, meaning the M4 was roughly 30% faster. Since it's analyzing around 20,000 frames, the M4's speed is pretty impressive and the M4 Pro or M4 Max should be even faster. Another cool addition is the AI transcription feature. Unfortunately, this feature currently only supports English, but it can translate audio using AI. The first time you use it, you'll need to download Apple's AI model, which requires an internet connection. But after that, you can run this offline and everything runs on device. So I'm just selecting this clip. This is the 14 minute clip that I just ran the mask experiment on. I'm going to right click and select transcribe to captions or you can do shift command C. Just created like all of the captions for this 14 minute video in like two seconds. For additional languages, you will have to wait until Apple intelligence supports your language. Since they say this feature is connected to the language availability on Apple intelligence itself. While finally getting auto transcription is great, they still don't have text-based editing. So this is one area where it's a little bit behind their competitors. The feature I am most excited about is spatial video editing. Now you can edit spatial videos shot on iPhone 15 Pro or later models in Final Cut Pro 11. Spatial vlogs is what I've been wanting to try and have been dreaming of since the iPhone 15 Pros came out. So I'm really excited. To shoot spatial video, you use the spatial video mode on the iPhone. And just quickly going over how spatial video works is that it's using two cameras for depth. So the iPhone 
Pros have these two cameras, iPhone 16s have cameras horizontally or vertically, depending on how you look at it. But basically the iPhone uses its main and ultra wide cameras to capture slightly different angles of the scene, similar to how your eyes actually work from two perspective from your right eye and your left eye. This gives the video a sense of depth. The iPhone also processes the information from both cameras to understand how far each object is from the camera and it creates a depth map that helps the video look more 3D. And when you import spatial videos to Final Cut Pro, you can treat them like regular videos or as spatial videos. You can add titles, background music, color grade, and edit them just like any other video. So let's give it a try. So first I need to create a timeline that is in spatial format. I am going to create a new project and make sure your format is set to spatial stereo 3D. And now click OK. All of the clips from the video that we were playing with before is actually spatial video. So I'm going to copy and paste everything. Oops. I misspelled spatial. So I'm going to keep this in um, and I want to add like a little title for introducing Pino and then me. So I'm going to add our names as a title. Okay, so now I added a very simple title, but now I want to show you that there is a new way to view spatial videos. So if you go into the view here and go to show stereoscopic as, and you can see there are a ton of different ways that you can show how the 3D is being processed. If you choose anaglyph, you will see that it's kind of like a blue and red merged together. It's exactly like how older 3D videos used to work. Like if you remember like a red and green, those like 3D glasses that we used to have a really long time ago. I think if you have one of those, this will look 3D. This is showing you the difference in between what your left eye and right eye will be seeing. If the red and blue are further away, like this his face is right now it means that it will feel closer and if you see like kind of the background it doesn't have that much of a difference in the red and blue placement that means it will look more flat or like in the back i also want to add the depth to the title itself so to do that you can go into here and use this stereoscopic menu to control how far things go so if i move this over you will see that like the the letters start to kind of like becomes further away it means it's closer but from my testing it looks like you don't really need to go super far if you go too far it will just like not render correctly because i think it's just too close um, so i want to keep it a little bit more subtle like that and i'll also make one for myself you can also color grade, but there's a new AI enhanced light and color feature. So you can use that as well to kind of quickly go through your footage and make sure everything looks good. Um, of course, you can manually change stuff like that as well. You can also add your music, whatever. And then once you're done, you can export into the Apple Vision Pro format. Now I'll demo what it looks like on my Vision Pro. However, of course, this video is in 2D, so it won't really show up in 3D, of course, but you can kind of tell what it looks like from your perspective. Okay, so now I have my screen over here. I'm going to airdrop the vlog that we just did. And here it is. <laughs> I can kind of make it full screen. This part kind of worked, but kind of didn't. My head looks a little bit weird, but it's kind of cool that I can, you know, edit something like this in spatial video. 
So spatial video editing is also now available for DaVinci Resolve 19.1. So Final Cut Pro and DaVinci Resolve will allow you to edit your spatial videos. But for now, viewers can only watch on their own devices. Vimeo is supposed to release a native app for Vision Pro by the end of the year where these videos can be uploaded and viewed. If you like to watch the spatial vlog that I just made of my picnic with Pino, I'll make it downloadable. So if you have a Vision Pro or a MetaQuest 3, you can check it out in spatial video. If you do download and watch it, let me know your thoughts. Does it feel like you are kind of like there with me more than like a regular YouTube vlog or like, is it just too much? I would love to hear your thoughts. Follow for more tech and creativity videos and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.